join me in the garage because I've got a little something that I'm working on. Diesel engine for the Land Cruiser has an EGR system, uh, swirl flaps, which I'm going to be removing, but it also has an intake heater screen. Now, in the UK, the temperatures never really get low enough for that to be important. Right now it's minus six outside and when I start the Land Cruiser it, do it still doesn't need the heater element. It is this thing which runs at about 100 amps when you turn it on and it charges a circuit in here and heats this element. There's a butterfly inside, uh, which I'm not going to mess with. I know better than to mess with butterfly valves. The block on the back of it is about an inch thick here. I'm going to strip this down a little bit. I'll just chuck it in the vise and strip it down. I've seen some very expensive machined CNC replacements for it, but they're all in Australia and they're very expensive. So what I'm going to do is take this spare one from my old dead engine. I just want to see if I can remove the metal blockages here. I'll just, I'll, I'll have a play with this. Let me strip this down and see what we find and whether or not I can turn this into an intake heater delete. Most of the bolts are already removed from, well, it's four bolts, you know, one in each corner from when I removed it from the engine. But this last one here, I think, is the secret to cracking open the block. I'll move this camera to see if I can help with the light, but uh, I'm gonna pop this open. And because this is Toyota, I think we can probably safely assume that that is 10 mil. Yep, it is 10 mil because Toyota. Let's see if this will crack off. Do that last bolt. Oh, a nice oily gasket. So inside, as expected, we have the butterfly valve there. This looks nice and clean on this side. This gubbins here is what I'm interested in removing. Looks to me like, get that gasket off. I wonder, first the electrics, they're coming in from this uh, bolt on terminal. So I wonder if I can just simply disconnect this and avoid any management lights. And the second thing is, can I remove this without having to get destructive? So I've got various reciprocating saws and things that I could use to really destroy this thing, but I would rather not. If I could, maybe, maybe I can get those screws. The downside is that they're probably Loctited. Everything that I've discovered so far on the Land Cruiser, the butterfly valves and so on, they've all got Loctite on, and I don't have a blowtorch here, so uh, it's a little tricky for me to get heat in order to break the Loctite. I've got some Jick screwdrivers, some of the Japanese ones, so I'll give that a whirl and see if I can get this little bit connected, because if I can avoid being destructive, then I, then I will. Let's see how I get on. So far, no good. No, I'm afraid not. It's just chewing the screw. It's not moving even slightly. So I, I think I'll, I'll see if any of these little pieces prize. It looks like it might be possible to prize some of these little side pieces. You know, maybe it can be removed out this way. I'll give that a go, but I'll need two hands. I'll use a tripod. I just get the feeling this is going to shoot off and strike me right in the face. I'm going to use a fair bit of leverage here, but I'm making sure that I don't leave her on the outside of the block. I don't want to damage the, the external faces. That's the first piece off. Well, Toyota Bolt that is not a 12. It is a 13. Yeah, I won't mess with that 20 year old O-ring. I'll leave that there. Starting to get a little movement now on the, on the insert. Might just end up being totally jammed on these two screws and that's where I might have to pop a grinder out or something. Let me have a look on the back side. Right, we've got two threaded holes, but no retaining clips that I can access on that side. So it might be that I can push out one side, but this I have to snap off, or maybe I can work it off by bending back and forward and worry about the screws afterwards. As long as they're gone by the time I refit this to the engine, so that they don't actually end up in the engine, then I think we're, we're okay. Oh goodness, right, look at all that. 
That's so strange. I wonder how this I wonder how this heating element works. If you know how this heating element works, you write it in the comments below, because I I, have, I do not understand that at all. Obviously, electric current comes in here, but this whole thing becomes charged. Do these plates heat up or something? I'm not sure. That's very peculiar. Fortunately, because of reasons, I have stripped the Land Cruiser engine apart, at least on the first Land Cruiser. And I still have, in this box, all of the aluminium, or aluminium for Americans, uh, inlet elbows. So if I have a look here, it looks to me like the diameter, or the opening here, is smaller than the area that I would cut open on this other section. Let me just do, let me just do a bit of measuring, and that will help us. As soon as I find some calipers, we shall do some measuring. It is nice finally having all my tools in the one place. It's quite a small garage, and you know, by American standards, you would call it a shop. This is not a shop. Got 82 mil, and we have 86 mil. So I don't think it's worth me attempting to carve out any more material from the side here. Well, that saves me a job. Even if I was to cut out the, the tabs here, it's backed by solid aluminium. No point me carving anything out. If I can just get these materials off, make sure there's no loose parts, then I think we have a functional delete of the heater screen. I've lost a piece. Own up. Who took it? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that bolt. It's in my hand and I'm looking for it. Oh, look at that. These little uh, these little pieces slide off. What is that? What is this little thing? Ceramic plate or something? Like maybe these... Let's get my magnet check again. Not a magnet. Oh yeah, that crunching noise. That sounds like ceramic to me. Look at this a little gentle tap. Yeah. So I'm guessing then that these are little ceramic plates that generate heat when they get that 100 amp current. Well, I'm not gonna need those anymore. Take all this stuff, all these little ceramic plates and doodads. Oh, apart from that one, because I need to somehow remove the bolt from that one. But the rest... Oh yeah, that's definitely ceramic. I just cut myself on it. That lot's for the bin. I think if everyone's in agreement, spring washer on the bolt side, just uh, let me know in the comments if I'm doing that wrong. Because I think the spring washer is supposed to be next to the bolt. So I put that through on the other end, because the other end is it is threaded. So get that here. With a bit of luck, I can get that tight enough that it will hold. Look like 13 mil on the inside. That looks like 15 there. Oh, it's not quite as tight as it was before. A few moments later. I just checked my video footage to make sure I've got my spring washer on the right side, and the spring washer was indeed on the bolt side. So I'll put that back in there. I did review that, in fact, the thick side of the washer was on the inside. So if I flip that around. Oh yeah, that is solid as a rock now. Okay, so my thin side of this retaining bolt has to be on the inside, and the thicker one on the outside. The electric comes onto this. That's rubber sealed on the outside, but the metal rod all the way through will make this nut live, which is connected to this, so this whole lot will get electric current. I just, it's a puzzle to me. It is a real puzzle. I might have to just try it without any electrical connection on there at all. I just left those two screws in on that side. It's a little bit ghetto, but uh, it works.
And one of the benefits for me doing everything on camera is that I can routinely check the footage. I've just checked the footage again to find out which orientation this bolt had and it's on the same side as the other loom plugs, which means I can reassemble that thusly. Yeah, but although the downside is that when you're working on the car, everything takes longer because you're filming. But the upside is that you can you can be checking your work all the time. Did I put my gasket in? Yes, for the 75th time, I have put my gasket in. Yeah, 12s now, so keeping me guessing. You know, just when I think um, Toyotas are nice and easy to work on, because like everything's a everything's a ten or a twelve. Well, you encounter the occasional thirteen. On this one part, we've used a ten, a twelve, a thirteen, and a fifteen. Come on, Toyota, what are you doing to me? I'm not going to snug all this tight because this isn't the piece that's going to go back on the car. Butterfly valve still there, and through the inside of the intake elbow, there's now no restriction. One thing I'm worried about is this electrical connector. Hopefully I don't have to bolt the loom back on there and I won't throw any engine codes, but I'll let you know. This isn't actually the piece that's gonna go back on the car because I'll leave the, this is from a different Land Cruiser. Just this, uh, the butterfly valve and what's in here, I don't want to swap that from one vehicle to another. All I want to do is move the machined metal plate. But for the purposes of storage, I've bolted this all back together. Uh, what will happen next is, when I reconnect this to the car, I'll have that Toyota machined EGR block here. Imagine that hole has an EGR block plate in it, and this goes off to the other inlet manifold. Now that that's all been cleaned out inside. Well, I'll call it quits for there. I'll do a bit of a part two once I've installed it on the car, I'll let you know if it throws any engine management lights. I don't actually have the car outside because it's away getting painted, so I can't fit it to the vehicle now. And it's minus six Celsius outside, so I don't want to be out there working on the car. It's relatively straightforward to remove the internals of the intake heater screen. The problem is that if you have to buy one from Toyota, you're looking at around 300 pounds. So for most people, it's not worth doing. But if you have a scrap Land Cruiser or if you can obtain that inlet manifold part, it is very straightforward to strip out the internals providing I don't get any electrical gremlins. So in part two, I'll give you a bit of feedback. As far as I'm concerned, for the UK, we don't need it for heating the intake. The temperatures just don't get that low, but I have a spare here. So I'll keep the original one intact. And if I do run into problems in winter, I can always swap them back and forward. Anyway, I hope that was interesting. Thanks everyone who's uh, new and who's subscribing and watching the videos. A lot of the YouTube content for Land Cruisers I have found is either quite old or quite generic so I, I'll try and make some more specific things just for the 100 series Land Cruiser and more specifically for the diesel engine because I've got two of them. Anyway, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, make good decisions if you can and I'll see you in another video. Thanks everyone, bye.